there. Hi, everyone. I'm Betty. Um, if you're not familiar with me, I'm a baking instructor and I teach here on this channel. I also teach over on bakerbetty.com and I live in Chicago and I teach uh, workshops in the Chicago area. And usually here on this channel, I do pretty formal baking tutorials. They're like pretty edited and nicely presented. Um, but I'm making pizza for dinner tonight and I told my Instagram audience that I would show them how to make it. So I thought maybe I would just try to go ahead and record more of a casual kind of vlog style video of me making the pizza and post it here on YouTube and just kind of see what happens. Um, because I make pizza all the time and it's actually super, super easy to make. Most of the ingredients for the dough are things that you probably have in your pantry. If not, they would be easy to find. Um, and then you can use any kind of toppings you want on it. Um, we make this at least once a week. It's so, so easy. And I also have a sourdough version of the dough that I make all the time as well. So this one is going to use dried yeast. I will share the sourdough version in the future as well. So to start the dough, all you need is you can use unbleached all-purpose flour or you can use bread flour. I'm using bread flour and this is about two and three-fourths cup of flour. I always wager, I always measure my ingredients by weight when I'm baking bread. Well, mo for really most of my baking, I measure by weight, but especially for bread dough recipes. So um, this is 330 grams of flour if you're gonna measure by weight. I find that actually so much easier to do when you're making bread, um, but however you want, two and three fourths cup of flour. Um, you're also gonna add one full package of dried yeast, preferably instant or rapid rise yeast. If you only have active dry, that will work as well, but it's just gonna take a little bit longer for your bread to rise. Now I'm also going to add about seven grams of fine sea salt in here. Um, that should be about two teaspoons of salt. Um, and you're gonna go ahead and add that in there. So all of your dry ingredients are in your bowl now, flour, yeast, and salt. And I know I'm probably gonna get some questions about mixing the yeast with water and adding a pinch of sugar to, it's called proofing your yeast when you do that. You don't need to do that with any of the yeast that you use for this. Just go ahead and add it right into your dry ingredients. Now, if you want to, you can add a little bit of olive oil. This is optional. Um, it will make just a little bit of a more tender pizza crust. I'm adding about a tablespoon in here, um, but that's optional. You can leave it out if you want. And then our last ingredient is our warm water. And we do need the water to be warm so it wakes up our yeast, gets things moving, but you do wanna be careful that the water's not hot. It should only be about 110, 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Just kind of uh, feel it. If it feels warm to the touch, that's good. If it feels hot to the touch, then it's too hot for the yeast and you can kill your yeast. So if your water's a little bit cooler than like 110 degrees Fahrenheit, your yeast is still going to wake up, um, but it just won't move as fast. So err on the side of it being a little too cool if you're kind of unsure or don't have a thermometer to check the temperature. So I'm gonna add my water right in my mixing bowl and you need a cup, which is 237 grams. And I'm just going to weigh it because that's how I like to measure. Okay, so now that I have all of my ingredients in the bowl, I'm just going to use a spatula to mix it up a little bit and get it started. And then I'm gonna knead it a little bit. Now you have a few options for um, how soon you use this dough. After you mix your dough, you can knead it by hand and then use it within the next hour. Um, you need to let it rest for at least 20 minutes, but you can let it rest for longer, like up to an hour, an hour and a half. Um, but if you don't wanna use it the day, the day you make it, if you wanna pre-make it, you can mix it and you can knead it if you want to, but you can actually skip the kneading step and just put it right in the refrigerator and let it sit in the refrigerator for up to like four or five days. And that extended time in the refrigerator, it's gonna slow your yeast down, but the time is actually going to develop the gluten structure for you instead of kneading by hand. So if you wanna make a no-knead bread or a no-knead pizza dough, you can, 
but you want to let it rest in the fridge for at least 24 hours. But you can go up to like four or five days. So I'm gonna use mine tonight though, so I'm gonna knead it. And you can throw this in a stand mixer if you want with your dough hook. I'm gonna just do a little bit of kneading by hand. Um, so I have floured my work surface here. I'm gonna get all my dough out. I'm gonna do a little bit of flour on top. And I'm just gonna knead this for probably a good eight to 10 minutes. Um, do what you can. Um, if you don't knead it completely all the way, it's still gonna make fine pizza, but you're gonna get uh, like a chewier, nicer crust that if you do knead it that whole eight to 10 minutes. But it definitely takes some arm strength um, to do it for that long. I just add a little bit of flour as I go. If it starts feeling like it's too sticky, sticking to my hands, now, something that I always tell my students in my bread classes is that if you are kneading dough by hand and it's constantly sticking to the counter or sticking to your hand, you really need to make sure that you are going across the dough instead of down into the dough and like pushing it into the counter. You're, you're trying to pull it and stretch it this way instead of going down into it. And as you knead it, it will get less um, sticky and more elastic. So I'm not trying to add tons and tons of flour to this. I wanna hold back as much as I can so that I get a really nice soft dough. I don't want it to get really hard and, and dry. So I'll come back and show you after I'm done kneading this. Okay, so I just wanted to give you a closer up view of the kneading of the dough. As you can see, I am stretching it out and folding it back over and kind of turning it 90 degrees each time. I'm not going down into the counter. I'm going across the dough. Um, my dough is really, really smooth. It's sticky, but it's not like gluing itself to my hands or to the counter. And yeah, it just feels really, really nice. So my favorite way to kind of check to see if your dough is done being kneaded is you round it up into a tight ball. You do have to kind of round it and get some tension over the top to do this. And then I'm just dipping my fingers in a little bit of flour and I'm gonna press down in on it. And if it immediately fills in that hole that you pressed in on it and it bounces up, then you have a good gluten structure. If that hole very, very slowly fills in, then you need to do a little more work on it. But I think this dough is good to go. So this is gonna make two pizzas. So I'm gonna divide it in half and I'm gonna take each half and kind of round it into a nice ball. Give it a little bit of tension, not too much. Just get it in a nice ball. And now I am going to dust a decent amount of flour over the top. Excuse my terrible camera work. I'm not used to doing this on my phone. Um, but I have both pieces of dough here. They're both kind of nicely dusted with some flour. And now I'm just going to um, cover them with a clean kitchen towel and I'm gonna let these sit while I prep my ingredients and prep my oven. These need to sit for a minimum of 20 minutes, but um, longer is better. They'll have a little more flavor. They'll have more air in them. So I usually go around an hour, but just kind of like however your schedule works. And I'm gonna show you how to prep the oven now and then the ingredients that I use for my pizza. So to prep your oven, you ideally want at least one pizza stone. If you have two, that's even better. Um, if you do not have a pizza stone, you can use a sheet pan or a cookie sheet turned upside down so that there's no like edges or lips on it. And you can kind of use that as your pizza stone. It does not work quite as well as a real pizza stone, but it will be better than nothing because you want your pizza to go in on a really hot surface so that the bottom of the crust immediately starts cooking and gets crisp. Um, now the top pizza stone is going to give some like heat down from the top. So I'm gonna preheat both of these in my oven. The one I'm cooking on is in the bottom third of my oven. The one that's just adding some extra heating is um, basically on the very top rack in my oven. So I'm gonna preheat both of them, but then I'm only going to put my pizza on the bottom one. And yes, I know my oven is dirty. I don't care. Um, so you wanna preheat your oven to the highest temperature you can. Um, for our oven, it's 550 degrees. 
and you want to give it at least 20 minutes preferably more it needs to get very 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 hot so as hot as you can get it at least 20 minutes i do mine sometimes up to an hour open your windows it's going to get very hot in your kitchen um but yeah so that's how you prep your oven Okay, for toppings, we keep it super simple. We love a good margarita pizza, so that's typically what we do. Um, a lot of times, we'll just buy a good store-bought sauce, but this time, I just took, we had a can of crushed tomatoes. I went ahead and just added some salt, a little bit of sugar to kind of cut the acidity, and then I added some fresh garlic in there. I will taste this and adjust if I need a little more salt in there, I will, but I just keep it super simple, no need for anything fancy. Um, and then we have fresh mozzarella. I just tore it into some hunks and then torn fresh basil. And that's it. Super, super simple. Um, we'll do the sauce. We'll do the mozzarella on top. And then once the pizza comes out of the oven, while it's still hot, we'll add the fresh basil on top. And it's just a really delicious, simple margarita pizza. This is also probably four times the amount of sauce we need for tonight's pizza. So I'll save this and we'll make pizza again soon. We make pizza all the time. Um, so it will not go to waste, but you definitely do not need this much sauce. Good. Okay, so um, I have let these rest. They've actually been resting for about 45 minutes. So that gave my oven plenty of time to preheat. You can see the dough got really relaxed and it's really nice and soft now. So now I can go ahead and stretch it. And um, I have just a cutting board here that I'm gonna use sort of as my pizza peel. And I'm gonna liberally dust it with some just cornmeal. And that's going to help my pizza slide right off onto the baking stone when we go into the oven. Okay, so to shape the dough, um, you don't really want to use a rolling pin whenever you shape pizza dough or you're just going to get all of that air out of the dough. So what I do is I just start by taking my fingers and kind of pressing the dough out to sort of make a edge, like a, a little crust. And then I press it all down to where it's somewhat flat, keeping that edge intact. And then I just go ahead and pick it up and I actually let gravity kind of do the work for me. And I'm keeping my hands kind of near the edge and I'm kind of holding them out wide and letting the dough just sort of stretch with gravity as I turn it. And if there's parts of the dough that are getting a little too thin, kind of try to avoid putting your hands there to let it stretch there and try to get it in the parts that are a little bit thicker so that you don't rip the dough or get one spot that's really, really thin. Now, if your dough is really fighting you, it probably means that you need to just let it relax for a little longer. All right, so once you get your dough stretched, you're just gonna put it right on your pizza peel if you have a pizza peel or a cutting board that has the um, cornmeal underneath it. And then I like to pick it up and just like make sure that it's gonna slide around before I start adding toppings because if it's too sticky underneath it before you add toppings, it's gonna be really hard to get it off. Okay, and then we're just gonna keep it super simple. We're just gonna put a little bit of this sauce down and the fresh mozzarella and then we will top it with the fresh basil when it comes out of the oven. You don't wanna do really, really thick sauce or heavy toppings, um, or it will take longer to cook. It'll be hard to, to um, slide it off your pizza peel. Okay, we are ready to go in the oven. Okay, so now we're just gonna go in the oven and the way you do this to get in the oven, it's a push and then a pull. You're not trying to like tip it off your pizza peel. You just wanna push it forward and pull it back. So I'll try and show you here. Now remember your pizza stone is super hot, so be careful, but push forward, pull back, and that's it. Okay, we are ready to pull our pizza out. and it looks amazing you can see that the middle is kind of like molten that doesn't mean the crust is um 
not set it definitely is but you want to wait to cut it until that middle kind of like cools down a little bit it will set a little better and then after you pull it out of the oven while it's still really hot you can add your torn basil right on top so that it gets warmed up and smells really amazing um, but you don't really want to put the fresh basil in the oven because it will burn so you want to put it on right when it comes out Okay, we're gonna go eat dinner. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you make this and how it goes. I'm always happy to answer any of your questions. If you aren't subscribed, hit that subscription button and ring the notification bell and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. All right, I'll talk to you guys later. Happy Pi Day. We just realized as we were making this that it's 3.14, which is Pi Day, which is perfect. Okay, bye.